Hello, my name is Caroline, and in this video, I'll show you how to do a basic Raspberry Pi OS setup for both the desktop version and light version for SSH. As of late May 2020, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has renamed their Raspbian operating system the Raspberry Pi OS. Now, there are three versions of the Raspberry Pi OS, desktop, desktop with recommended software, and light. If you're a beginner, I recommend the desktop version. And if you know your terminal commands and you're doing a project that is only running a few scripts and you're planning to access your Raspberry Pi via SSH, then I recommend the light version. If you're not already familiar with SSH, it is the secure shell protocol and is used to securely remote login from one computer to another. In this video, we will set up our ability to SSH from a Mac to a Raspberry Pi running the light version of the operating system. Now let's get started. Now, what's the real reason I'm making this video today? This is actually the prerequisite to a video that I'm going to release shortly where I make a status indicator light. And I thought it would be a great idea to make a video I could reference going forward on any projects where I say, hey, I'm starting with a Raspberry Pi OS Lite, or hey, I'm gonna do a Raspberry Pi project and I'm gonna SSH into my Raspberry Pi. For this project, you'll need your Mac or Windows computer with a micro SD or SD card slot and an adapter if you are using SD. Most computers today have a micro SD or SD slot. If your computer does not, you can also purchase this USB adapter for your micro SD card. You'll also need your Raspberry Pi, your mouse, keyboard, HDMI monitor, and appropriate cables depending on your Pi, and of course a power supply for your Pi. Now let me start a screen record. As you can see my screen, I am at the raspberrypi.org website. From here, I'll hit downloads and you'll see there is a Raspberry Pi OS, previously called Raspbian. It is the official operating system for all Raspberry Pis. I'm gonna use the Raspberry Pi Imager, which was launched a few months ago. Now I have a Mac OS computer, so I will hit Mac OS. It will download an image and then I would install it as I normally do for any other app on my computer. Now that I've downloaded the Raspberry Pi Imager, I will click on it and that should start the install process and I'll just drag and drop it into applications. I already had the Raspberry Pi Imager installed my, on my computer. I'll just hit replace, and then now I can go into my Launchpad applications and go into my Raspberry Pi Imager. And I'll hit open, yes, I wanna open it. And now let's choose our operating system, choose OS, and generally speaking, for a normal Raspberry Pi desktop setup, you would select Raspberry Pi OS. There should be a 62-bit coming out very, very soon, and this is to support the new Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigabyte that just dropped. For this particular setup, because we're only going to use this through SSH, I'm gonna choose Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then I'm gonna choose Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Next, I need to choose my SD card. Now, this is where you need to be able to insert your micro SD card that you're gonna use with your Raspberry Pi into your computer. My computer happens to have a full-size SD card, so I've got this little adapter here. If your computer, generally speaking, most computers have a micro SD card slot or an SD card slot. If your computer does not have one, then you can always purchase one of these adapters. It's a USB adapter and you would insert your micro SD card into this adapter and then put the USB into your computer. Now I'm just going to use the SD card slot on my computer, insert it right here and I will hit choose SD card. And there it is. My card is available to me and then I'll hit write. It will prompt me for my password will be flashing it to our micro SD card. I'm gonna let this finish and I'll be right back. Excellent, our Raspberry Pi OS Lite 
has been written to our micro SD card. You can now remove the card from the reader. I'll hit continue. I'm going to close this out, but I'm going to show you a little trick that will save you some time. You can create this file called WPA supplicant. I'm going to open it with Atom. So Atom is a free app that you can download for your computer. And if you're wondering where to get that at, that's Atom.io. And this is a free download. Now you want to create a WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF file. And in this file, you'll copy and paste this exact same text. You'll want to update your country. I live in the US, so mine says US. Then you'll want to replace the SSID with your network name, and then you'll enter in your network's password and you'll hit save. And then what you want to do is you'll want to remove your micro SD card after it's been flashed and then immediately insert it. So we're not ready to insert our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi quite yet. We have just finished flashing our micro SD card with the Raspberry Pi OS. We remove the micro SD card. We immediately put it back before we put it in our Raspberry Pi. We create this WPA supplicant.conf file on our computer, and then we will copy that file to our micro SD card. And our micro SD card is labeled as boot. Now in boot, we'll copy over our WPA supplicant file. There it is. And we now have a WPA supplicant file copied into our micro SD card. Why am I doing this? That means that once I insert this micro SD card into my Raspberry Pi, it will automatically be on my network. And you can do this with the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, and you can do this with Raspberry Pi Desktop OS as well. It's a quick little tip that will save you time when you go to set up your Raspberry Pi. Now I'm ready to eject my micro SD card and remove it from my computer. Next, we'll set up our Raspberry Pi. In this scenario, I'm using a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, but you could absolutely do this on a Raspberry Pi 0W. And I will take out my micro SD card and insert it into my Raspberry Pi 4. Now we're switching over to our Raspberry Pi. I've got it right here. In the last scene I showed you, I put the micro SD card I just flashed and I copied the WPA supplicant onto this micro SD card. I've got a special HDMI for the Raspberry Pi 4. I'll plug that into my HDMI monitor. Then I've got a mouse and keyboard dongle. I'll plug that in. And last but not least, I will power up my Pi. And then let's turn around this monitor and you'll see my Pi come to life. Excellent. Now we have our Raspberry Pi OS Lite and it's asking me for my login. The default login is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. From here, we have a few agenda items that we need to cover. Number one, I want to change the password from the default password to a custom password. Number two, I want to set up the ability for SSH. Let's change the password first. I'll start with sudo raspy config. Option number one is to change the password. I'll hit enter to get into change the password. And now it's prompting me and I'm gonna hit enter. And now it is prompting me to enter in my new password. And then it is now prompting me to re-enter my new password just to confirm. And now it'd like me to acknowledge that I've changed my password. I'll just hit enter again. Simple as that. And now back to the main menu for sudo raspy config. Now I want to go down to interfacing options to enable SSH. So I will arrow down to the fifth option, hit enter, and then it will give me options for a camera. Now, if you are doing a project with a camera, you would want to enable that camera. But for this setup, I'm just going to set this up for SSH, which is the second option. I'll arrow down to SSH and hit enter. Now I can enable SSH. All I have to do is hit the tab button to move it over to enable and I'll hit enter. I'll hit enter to acknowledge and that should take me back to the main menu. Now that I'm at the main menu, I want to exit the main menu and I'll tab down until I get to finish. Once I highlight finish, I'll hit enter 
and that should take me out of sudo raspy config. Now let's check to see if I am on the internet. I'll type in ifconfig. This is your internal IP address. If an IP address appears, that means you are on the internet. If you realize at this point you are not on your internet, you will need to get yourself on the internet. And the way to do that, if you didn't do the previous step of the WPA supplicant, you would go back into sudo raspy config and you would go into network options, which is the second selection, hit enter and then you would uh, select your network options at that point. I'll hit the down arrow once and then hit enter and then that will prompt me to type in my network SSID followed by the password. Now I'm not going to do that because I've already done that at this uh, state so I'm just gonna uh, get out of that. Now I'm back to the main menu. This is how you would go through and set up your wireless configuration in the sudo raspy config. Now I'm just gonna exit out and I'm back to my terminal. Now we have our SSH set up, we have our password changed, and we know what our internal IP address is. Now I can disconnect this HDMI monitor and I can SSH from my regular computer. Let's do that in the next step. And now we are back to my desktop computer. I am running on a Mac. If you are running a Windows machine, you'll need to download and install an application called Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. I will link to it below. On a Mac, you do have a native application called Terminal. So I'm gonna open up my Terminal now uh, from Launchpad. You can just search for Terminal, and there it is. That's the easiest, quickest way to get to your Terminal. And from your Terminal, you're gonna to wanna to type in SSH Pi at and then the, your internal IP address. Now I found out from the last step that my internal IP address was 10.0.0.109. And another note before I go into this is that you do want to reserve that IP address with your network router, and that is specific to your network router. So I would Google search, I have this type of network router and I need to reserve this IP address for this device going forward. I've already done that, so every single time that my Raspberry Pi comes online, it takes up the same IP address. That way, every time I turn it on and I want to SSH into it, I know that 10.0.0.109 is the internal IP address I will be SSH into. I will hit enter, so it's SSH Pi at 10.0.0.109, enter. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. And here is the password prompt. In the last step, I changed the password from the default password to my custom password, enter in my password, and sure enough, here I am. I am now in my Raspberry Pi I just set up. Now, if I type in an LS, I don't get anything. This is the Raspberry Pi OS Lite version. That's why you don't see anything. Don't panic, you're fine. You can always do sudo app get update and you will update all of your files. You also wanna do a sudo apt get upgrade as well to make sure you have all of the latest files. And then from there, you can start installing custom applications. For example, let's say you want to install VLC onto your Raspberry Pi. You would use your terminal commands as you normally do. Type in sudo apt install VLC and I would hit yes to continue. And this is how you install apt using SSH on your Raspberry Pi or on your Raspberry Pi Lite without the desktop, this is how you install apps. We're gonna give it a minute so that the VLC completes the install. Excellent, we have now completed the install of VLC. I was just showing you one example of something you could install using a terminal command through SSH to your Raspberry Pi. Now, your next question is probably, what if I need to reboot? You type in reboot if you need to reboot your Raspberry Pi. What's a little bit trickier is if you need to shut down your Raspberry Pi. You can always pull the power plug and that is actually very common practice. It's not considered best practice though, but it is a very common practice. If you'd like to shut down your computer, turn off your Raspberry Pi remotely through SSH, you would type in sudo shutdown now dash H and you have effectively and correctly turned off your Raspberry Pi. And that is how you install Raspberry Pi OS Lite on your Raspberry Pi and access via SSH. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Bye now.